நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த தமிழ் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனோன் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. In my last video I explained about the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Leo ascendant. In this video I am going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of virgo ascendant for the native of kanya ascendant that is virgo ascendant moon is the lord of the 11th house which is house of gains when moon resides in virgo it means the native is virgo ascendant and virgo rashi what does it indicate it indicates that you are working in the computer field If the native is Virgo ascendant and Virgo rashi where moon resides in the ascendant house itself and if the ascendant lord mercury is also strong it indicates the native will be very intellectual and the native will be highly inclined towards mathematics computers accounts commerce and any field related to intelligence The native might be an expert as well depending on subhatwa of the moon and such a native will understand astrology those who watch my video currently will be mostly kanya lagna or kanya rashi astrology is signified by mercury there is a variation between gemini and virgo in this regard gemini signifies astrology whereas virgo signifies mathematics astronomy accounts commission etc all these will be delivered by virgo the position of moon in virgo is considered to be very auspicious if the native is virgo ascendant and virgo rashi it is considered to be very auspicious now let me explain the effects of moon in the second house to the ascendant which is libra when moon resides in libra it is considered to be more auspicious because the lord of gains is in the house of wealth moon delivers enormous benefits since it is lord of house of gains residing in the second house to the ascendant house moon will deliver enormous benefits provided it is subhatwa and moon should not be in conjunction with saturn or rahu now let me explain the effects of moon in the third house scorpio here moon will deliver such worse effects 
What is the reason? For the native of dual ascendant, the lord of 7th house and 11th house or Marakadipati. Therefore, when the moon, which is Marakadipati, resides in Scorpio in the third house to the ascendant house, Mercury will be in a mindset that its enemy got spoiled. Because Mercury considers the moon as its enemy. However, moon should be Subhatva though it gets debilitated in the house of Scorpio. Because moon is not only an enemy to Mercury, it is also the significator of mind and mother of the native. Having said this, when moon gets spoiled, it also affects mother and mind of the native. Therefore, the moon should be Subhatva while it resides in Scorpio in the debilitation status. To overcome this shortcoming, there is another possibility like the ascendant Lord and Jupiter should be strong. When moon is spoiled, it spoils the mind. Though the mind gets spoiled, if the soul is in a good condition, it is good. Well, why Jupiter should be strong? Why did I say this? Even if the moon is spoiled, the lord of fourth house, which is Jupiter, should be strong. When the natural significator of mother, which is moon, is spoiled, the lord of the fourth house, which also signifies mother, which is Jupiter, should be strong. Having said the above, if the native was Virgo ascendant and Scorpio Rashi, if the ascendant Lord Mercury and Lord of the fourth house Jupiter are strong, then even though moon is spoiled, it will have less impact on the native with respect to mind and mother. If the eleventh house is spoiled, it indicates there is no second marriage. It spoils either the status of elder brother or elder sister or there will be no elder brother or elder sister. When moon gets debilitated in Scorpio, which is the lord of the 11th house, what will happen? It indicates that it spoils the gains of the native. The native can live with only the first wife and there will be no second wife in his life. In case if there is a second wife, it means the 11th house will be Subhatva. If you understand both the Bhava and the Lord of the Bhava, then you can make accurate predictions. You can apply this rule very well in order to make predictions. When Lord of the 11th house gets spoiled, it indicates that the native does not have an elder brother or elder sister. In case if there is an elder brother or elder sister, the native might not have good rapport with the elder sibling. Therefore, in order to overcome this shortcoming of the position of moon in Scorpio, where it gets debilitated, a substitute for the mind, which is Atma, signified by the Ascendant Lord, should be strong. And in order to compensate the affliction of the mother's status by moon, Jupiter, which is the Lord of the fourth house, should be strong. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the fourth house to the ascendant house which is Sagittarius. When moon resides in Sagittarius it means that the moon attains directional strength that is Digbala. I would like to add another point here. When moon resides in Scorpio it is heading towards directional strength. Directional strength is the one which is considered to be equal to own house status. Debilitation is considered to be the least sort of pabatwa. However, moon is heading towards directional strength. Therefore, the moon will not deliver very worse effects when the native is Virgo ascendant and Scorpio Rashi, provided moon is not pabatwa. When moon resides in Sagittarius, it is in the house of a benefic, whose house lord is Jupiter. And as per Bhavat Bhavam, it will be in the 6th house 
to its own house cancer which is house of games when moon resides in sagittarius it will not deliver the house effects of the 11th house yet it will deliver the house effects of the 4th house it will deliver benefits since the moon is digbala here it indicates that the native has a good mind and a good mother now let me explain the effects of moon in the 5th house to the ascendant which is capricorn the house lord of capricorn is saturn in case if the moon is waxing it will deliver benefits now let me explain the effects of moon in the 6th house which is aquarius whose house lord is saturn when moon resides in aquarius it will be in the 8th house to its own house cancer as per bhavat bhavam when moon resides in aquarius it will aspect the 12th house to the ascendant house when moon has got good light energy it will make the 12th house subhatva for the native of virgo ascendant aquarius rashi is good to a certain extent on the contrary when it resides in the 5th house which is house of capricorn it will deliver benefits provided certain conditions are met if moon has a lot of light energy when it is residing in capricorn it is good moon should not be in the 6th house to the ascendant house without light energy that is it should not be heading towards amavasya or it should not be amavasya though the houses such as 3rd house 6th house 10th house and 11th house are considered to be good moon should not reside in the 6th house without light energy this is not considered to be good at all therefore in order to make predictions you have to first of all gauge the light energy of the moon Though moon is in the sixth house to the ascendant house, if it is Purnima or heading closely towards Purnima, and if it has got connection of Jupiter or Venus, then the moon will not deliver such worse effects. Moon will not deliver the house effects of the eleventh house when it is in the sixth house to the ascendant house due to Bhavat Bhavam. because when moon resides in aquarius it will be in the 8th house to its own house cancer which is 11th house to the ascendant now let me explain the effects of moon in the 7th house which is pisces moon will deliver immense benefits when it resides in pisces whose house lord is jupiter when moon that has a lot of light energy aspects the ascendant house it is considered to be more auspicious when the 11th house lord resides in the 7th house definitely it will deliver certain shortcoming in the marital life what is the reason because when the 11th house lord resides in the 7th house moon will become marakadipadi and padakadipadi since it is all about a dual ascendant The seventh house is Maraka and Padaka Stana. For the native of dual ascendant, Lord of seventh house will be Maraka Dibadi and Padaka Dibadi and Kendra Dibadi, and the Lord of eleventh house is Padaka Dibadi. Having said this, when the eleventh house Lord resides in the seventh house, it is not good to the marital life. It is not good. when padagadibadi resides in 7th house with more subhatva if moon resides in 7th house with a lot of light energy aspecting the ascendant house it will make the native very famous if moon is waxing or heading closely towards purnima or if it is purnima having lot of light energy and gets connected with the ascendant house then the native will be a very good person the native will definitely have the ability to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong 
will definitely possess a good mind, will definitely do a lot of good things to others and the native will definitely like to be famous. Because moon is a luminous planet. Even sun is not such a great luminous planet, whereas moon is such a complete luminous planet. Sun is a planet that renders or gives its light to other planets and makes them pure. The planets such as Jupiter, Venus, Moon, which receives the sunlight and reflects on Earth are considered to be more auspicious and when these planets get connected with the ascendant, then the native will definitely be a good person. Having said all these, when the native is Kanya ascendant, that is Virgo ascendant and Pisces Rashi, it is good to a certain extent. It is good provided moon is filled with lot of light energy. Moon should not be definitely in connection with Saturn or Rahu. I have already explained what will happen with the conjunction of Saturn, Rahu and Moon. I already mentioned that in one of my last videos for Capricorn Rashi, if Moon, Saturn and Rahu reside in the house of Capricorn, whereas as per Bhavat Bhavam, Moon resides in the 7th house to its own house, the native cannot mention about his mother in the society with dignity. There will be some issues regarding the character of the mother. Well, for the native of Virgo ascendant, if the moon has got a lot of light energy residing in the 7th house, which is Pisces, and aspecting the ascendant house, it is considered to be good. Now, let me explain the effects of moon in the house of Aries, which is 8th house to the ascendant. Moon should not be in the 8th house from the ascendant. When moon resides in 8th house, it is not near Digbala and moreover it resides in house of Mars. The 11th house lord is in the 8th house from the ascendant which is not considered to be good. Therefore, the combination of Virgo ascendant and Aries Rashi is not a good one. Based on the light energy of the moon, you have to understand the strength of the mind of the native. If moon resides in the 8th house to the ascendant house, it is not good. Indeed, it is bad. What is the antidote for this? In case if the moon here has got the connection of natural benefits or if the moon is waxing or if it is Purnima, then these shortcomings will be ignored. At crust level, there is a possibility to make a wrong prediction when moon is in the 8th house to the ascendant house. So please make your predictions carefully when the moon resides in 8th house for the native of Virgo ascendant. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the 9th house for the native of Virgo ascendant. The 9th house is Taurus. The moon gets exalted in the house of Taurus. For the native of Virgo ascendant, lord of the 11th house gets exalted in the 9th house and the important point to note here is that moon gets exalted in the house of Venus which is lord of the 2nd house as well. You see how the connection of 2nd, 11th and 9th houses are established. The lord of the house of gains, which is the 11th house, gets exalted in the 9th house, whose house lord is also the lord of the 2nd house. Based on the strength of the planets, you have to make predictions about how rich this person will be. If the ascendant is very strong, then this native will definitely be a millionaire. When the ascendant is strong and the native enjoys the major planetary period of the second house or ninth house or eleventh house, then the dasha will deliver crores of money to the native. The tenth house lord should also be strong. When the ascendant lord and tenth house lord are strong, 
then the native was Virgo ascendant and Taurus Rashi, then during the Dasha or Antar Dasha, that is major planetary period and minor planetary period of these planets, the native will earn crores of money. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the 10th house which is Gemini. Though the moon is Nishbala, in the 10th house it is good to a certain extent. Though as per Bhavat Bhavam, the lord of the 11th house is in the 12th house to its own house, it will deliver good profession. Based on the light energy of the moon and Subhatva, you have to decide the profession. When the moon with good light energy resides in 10th house, it will deliver professions through its significance like liquid related professions etc. Sometimes when the moon is lord of the 10th house and if it is in Parivartan with Mercury in the 11th house, it will deliver added benefits. Now let me explain the effect of moon in the 11th house, Cancer for the native of Virgo ascendant. It indicates that the native has got a good elder brother and a good elder sister. If it is Pabatva, then the native will have fights with the elder brother or elder sister. If moon is not Pabatva here, the native will feel their elder brother as father feel their elder sister as their own mother. So when the 11th house is strong, it will give such a feeling to the native. Imagine that there is a difference of 15 years between you and your elder sister and here the elder sister will be responsible just as a mother. I have already explained about these sort of natal charts and I have witnessed these sort of caring sisters and brothers in many birth charts. The elder sister might treat her younger brother more closely than her husband. These ladies even will dump their husbands in the dustbin but will take care of the younger brother as their own children. There are many elder sisters who even take care of their younger brothers more than their children and treat the younger brothers as their souls. They spend their whole life for the well-being of their brother, will be concerned about the marriage of the brother, the progeny of the brother, future of the brother, etc. If the 11th house is strong, elder brother who might have been even 15 years older than the native will take care of the native as a father. In case if the father dies, the elder brother will become more responsible and will take care of the native just like the father. A person who can take care of his younger brother or younger sister who might have been 15 years younger or any number of years younger like their own children is delivered by this 11th house. If you see in a natal chart, the 11th house is very strong and Subhatva, then the native will be blessed with good elder brothers and good elder sisters. These sort of elder brothers or elder sisters will give great importance and even I can say more importance to the native than to their own family and their own children. To be more precise, I have seen such relationships among the community of Sri Lankan Tamil. I have seen certain people who were born as the eldest who will go abroad will earn a lot, will raise a whole family and the younger brothers and younger sisters, everybody and even this person will never get married for the welfare of the younger siblings. In Tamil Nadu, the love between the siblings are fading as the parents are ready to give birth to only two children in a way to give the best financial aid to the children. But the Sri Lankan community, Tamil community, is completely a flawless community. This community gives lot of importance to relationships. They share such a great bond, they have a such a great bond between sisters and brothers. A family will comprise five to six siblings and each one of them 
or sharing a great bond between each other. In my life, I have never seen a person who is not close to their sibling. I have never seen a person who had pointed out their elder sibling as somebody who tells lies or somebody who is worse, nothing like that. I have been working as a commercial astrologer for 10 years and for all these years I have heard only good things about their elder siblings or younger siblings from the people of Sri Lankan Tamil community. And it is quite common to see that the natives will not be even concerned about himself. The native will be concerned about the life of the elder sibling or the person will be concerned about younger sister, the life of the younger sister. The native will say like that she has not got married to a good person, her husband is not good, not taking enough care and the native will be extremely concerned about the future of the younger sister. I got completely surprised to hear all this. Would these people never be concerned about their own future? These people will always be concerned about their mother, their father, younger sister or elder sister, younger brother or elder brother. I will receive the next phone call from the sister of this native who will be concerned about the native and the other members of the family. I mean, on the first call, the brother will be asking questions about the life of his sister. On the next call, I will receive from the sister who will be concerned about the life of her brother. The sister will say like, we the four of the sisters have got married, but my elder brother has not got married and we are looking for a bride for him and she will be asking a lot of questions about her brother. That is, she will be concerned about the future of her brother. The 11th house indicates that the native will have such a lovely elder brother or elder sister. Therefore, when 11th house is strong and Subhatva, it delivers more benefits through its significance. Now, let me explain the effects of moon in the 12th house for the native of Virgo ascendant. I have already mentioned that the 12th house is the house of expenses. For the native of Virgo ascendant, if sun is strong, the native will be interested towards eastern side. Having said this, when Lord of 11th house, which is the house of gains, resides in the 12th house as Purnima, it will deliver benefits through the 12th house effects. It will definitely give gains. The 12th house indicates foreign country or neighboring state or distant place. Here the moon resides in its friendly house and when it is strong, definitely it will deliver benefits through 12th house effects. The 12th house also signifies the quality of the sleep of the native, share market, life abroad, gain of money in an indirect way, smart ways where one can cheat others and gain money. All these will be delivered by Subhatva moon in the 12th house. It is important that the moon needs to be Subhatva here. Well, if the moon is Pabhatva, let us say if it is Amavasya, then it gives all the effects quite opposite to what I said just now. For example, the native cannot have good sleep, he will face loss in share market, he will suffer in foreign countries and then he will return to motherland or some people who will get cheated in an attempt to go abroad and all these will be delivered when moon is Pabhatva in the 12th house. We can see some people who always wants to go abroad and ignore the best opportunities that knocks the door. These sort of effects will also be delivered by Pabhatva moon in the 12th house. In my next video, I am going to explain about the effects of moon for the native of Libra ascended. Well, this is question time. For the native of Virgo ascendant, what is the antidote when moon gets debilitated in Scorpio? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. 
In the description box, we have added the playlist link of all the English videos so far published as per the request of our subscribers. The link of Aditya Gurji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is available. Please check the description box and write your feedback to astro.writetous at gmail.com. Thank you.